I am here today with Matteo Piazza, Swiss professional drummer who has been playing, teaching and endorsing tamboro for 26 years. He has a music school, Centro Studi Musicali della Svizzera Italiana in Lugano, Switzerland. You're part of the Tamboro family. How is it going? Hi Naomi and hi everybody. Welcome here in Lugano in my music school. And thank you for the opportunity to talk a little bit about the Tamboro brand and about my experience with the brand. Well, now I'm part of the family since 26 years, which is a long time, right? And everything began um, with a phone call that I got from a jazz musician, Swiss guy, very famous, Franco Ambrosetti. Franco needed a drummer for his starting tour all over Switzerland and he was asking me if I would like to join the band. Of course, it, I was very happy about this idea, but the problem at the time was that I didn't have a serious jazz drum set to play the tour, right? So what I did, I called Tullio, Tullio Granatello, with whom I was already in touch to a friend of mine, and I was asking for his help in the situation. And Tullio was immediately happy to help me, and for the tour, he gave me his personal jazz drum kit, names original. Well, this is still probably one of the best sounding drum kits that I ever heard in my life. Well, the tour was fantastic, of course. And we played in the best jazz club in Switzerland, like Modes in Zurich, uh, Beer Übeli in Bern, AMR in Geneva. And we were on the road for a couple of weeks. And I remember that everywhere, the sound engineers, they were asking me, hey man, which kind of drum set is this one? Which kind of wood, which kind of construction? Because it, it wasn't that famous at the time. And to be honest, I didn't know so much about the kit at the time. I just was in love with the way it sounded and with the way it was responding to me. Unfortunately, after the tour, I was supposed to bring it back to Tullio, right? And so I went there and I was asking him about the opportunity to become an endorser of Tamburo drums. And so Tullio was asking me a couple of things about my career, like my study, my teaching, my bands, my projects, my TV shows. And so after three or four days, he called me back and he says, hey man, Welcome on board. <laughs> so this was a fantastic news for me, of course. And since then, since then I never I never went out on the road again without a tamburo set with me. And still today I'm very happy and very proud that every time I can count on the quality of those drum set in my job. Can you describe Tamburo Unica? with three words. Tamburo Unica, like this one that we have here, this is my custom model. So if I have to reduce it to three words, then probably flexible, wonderful and unique. Unica. And how about Tamburo T5? You know what? To answer to this question, please follow me to the drum class of the school. So let's go this way. Let's go, let's go. All right, here we go. We go this way. And then here. Welcome to the drum class of the school. Okay. So as you can see, we have yet two drum sets and both of them are Tamburo T5. Okay, we've got this one, 
wonderful silver white sparkle finish and the other one it's blue oh, okay so um, those drum sets they have been played since one year from many 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 students of us and believe me not everyone is dedicated with the instrument but after one year of intense use of the instruments they still sound fantastic nothing it's broken as you can see very nice And, last but not least, they look great, which is also important. So, in my opinion, there are no other drum brands all over the world they were able to make an entry-level instrument that has this quality. By quality, I mean the rims, of the bass drum, for example, which is real wood. The suspension rims of the tom-toms, they are working very, very good. And even the general construction of the instrument, it's very solid. And in my opinion, it's a very, very good instrument for a beginner, but not only. So if somebody have a small budget, then probably T5 is going to be the right choice, right? Now, what advice would you give to people who want to start playing the drums? Probably the main suggestion that I would give to somebody who wants to start playing drums is to look for a good teacher. A good teacher who can give you a strong starting point helping you with the fundamentals, with the technique, with music reading, and who can help you to understand which is the function of this instrument in music. Most of the people have a completely wrong idea about playing drums. They think that if they want to be very loud, very fast and whatever, they have to be very strong, very nervous and fight against the instrument. Of course, this is totally wrong. In this way, you got exactly the opposite, right? If you want to be fast, loud, cool, good sounding and whatever, first of all, you need to relax by playing drums. And even when you think you're relaxed, you can relax even more, right? It's gonna be a long way. It's gonna be, it's gonna be hard. Sometimes it's gonna be frustrating. Don't worry, it's all part of the process. Keep going, you need to be sure about your goal and try to reach it. Try to stay focused on it. And for those who want to try to become professionals, right, uh, try to keep yourself, your technique, your shape always on the highest level as possible, whatever that means for you. You never know when the right phone call is going to come and then at this moment you're better ready to perform at your best, right? and try to be serious, try to be in time to the rehearsals, to the gigs. Try to leave your troubles at home, even if it's not always possible. Try even to leave at home every kind of ego, right? Try to be aware of the function of the instrument in the music you are playing. Your goal should always be to make the music sound better thanks to your drum part, 
right? Try to be with your head and with your heart, with your soul, in the music you are playing at the moment. And try to believe in what you're doing. And try even to have fun in what you're doing. This is very important. This is a very important part of the story, right? If you have fun, then probably you will transmit this fun to the audience and to the musician playing together with you. And can you tell me if you have any rituals before going on stage? Yes, I do have some rituals before I'm going on stage. Probably the main one is to make a little warm-up with my practice pad in the backstage, if there is one, of course. And then sometimes, depending on the gig, I'm going to the set list, make sure there are no fancy spots, maybe comparing with happened the last gig and if something went wrong trying to make it better and then in general trying to relax a little bit before the gig start. What is a project that you are most proud of so far? Oh wow, this is a very delicate question. And I will try to be as a diplomatic as I can, right? And you know, in my career, I played with so many different projects. And somehow I'm proud of every one of those. And probably the project that I'm the most proud of beside my private life was the one to become a professional drummer. And can you tell me about any future projects? Oh yes, I have some. Um, by the way, it's always good to have some future projects. In this particular period, uh, one of my main future projects is to keep alive my already existing projects because of what happened in the last year, right? And then I'm working on my own album, on my own record, for which I already started to write some music and I'm trying to put together all the ideas in order to record it by the end of this year 2021. What's the most exciting live concert you've ever played? <laughs> the most exciting concert, right? Let me think about it. You know what? Probably the first one. Yeah. When I was 13. It means 30 years ago, almost. Mm, long time. At the time, in a small village in the south part of Switzerland, we put together my first band, right? I don't even remember exactly why we did it. It was probably uh, to have a kind of status with the girls, rather than a, a real passion for music, right? So I remember that we were practicing, rehearsing a lot, but at a certain time it became the moment to play the first concert. And I remember that all my family, all my friends, the school, and all the people of the village, they came to the concert. And I was very, very nervous and I was practicing the night before, through the night. So I went to the gig with black eyes, very tired. And I remember it was a disaster. 
I was that nervous. I wasn't even able to hold the sticks in my hands. They were falling around. But the people like it. So this was the concert that for me it was the most exciting, the first one. You never forget it, like the first love, right? And can you tell me if there's any type or genre of music that you don't like? <laughs> you know, uh, I grew up in the 80s musically, and so I was exposed to the British invasion, a lot of pop, rock music. And at the same time, I was studying a lot of jazz with my teacher at the time. And so those styles, jazz, pop, rock, are probably the styles that I'm preferring even to play. But uh, to be honest, since a long time, I'm not dividing music in good and bad styles. I'm focusing in quality or not quality. And you can find this in every kind of music. And I'm trying to listen to, listen to all kinds of music as much as possible. I'm trying to catch ideas from everywhere in order to play better my favorite style. Who are the drummers that inspire you? There are so many drummers that I'm in love with. But if I have to choose one name right now, then it would be probably Vinnie Colaiuta. Vinnie, because I like so much his ability to play on a such a high level so many music styles with the right phrasing, with the right touch, the right dynamic. And even for his courage to mix knowledge and risk. Because Vinnie has a big wild side when he's playing. And then when I'm thinking on jazz, of course, Elvin Jones, Tony Williams, and then drummers like Steve Smith, Steve Gadd, Dave Wechel, Dennis Chambers, Thomas Lang, fantastic drummer, and even people like Eric Moore. Actually, you know what, I'm more in love with drums than with drummers. And sometimes I'm learning from students of mine who are showing me things that I will never think about it. So it's very important to keep, to keep the mind open in order to be always, always in the position to learn something. It's a lifetime process, right? And it's a fantastic process. Do you have a message for the Tamboro community? So, my message to the Tambura community. Hi, everybody out there. Nice to meet you in this way. I'm very happy and proud to be part of the family together with you. Everybody of us should be thankful to the guy who was inventing the brand and those drums a long time ago, Tullio Granatello. Tullio is now part of the bigger family Proel and I'm very thankful to Proel too because they supported me so much in the last years. They provided me with the best possible material custom made for me, allowing me to go out on the road with every kind of weather, pulling in and out from every kind of vehicles, by knowing my equipment will do the job and it will do it great. 
I never had something to complain about the family, the material or whatever. The opposite. I was always very satisfied and proud to be part of the family because they trusted me, they invested on me, they were putting me on the international catalogs or they were trusting me enough, for example, to invite me to represent the Tamburo brand at the Frankfurt Musik Messe, playing in the cabin between many, many world-famous drummers. So my wish for the future is that the family could even grow more than now, that we can stay in touch with each other, sharing some technical ideas, solutions, or maybe some drum licks, why not? Or maybe even uh, organizing a big tamburo event somewhere, somehow. Why not? I will be glad to do it together with you.